Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to this lecture number 19, which is uh, the last lecture in this series and the last lecture in this course on consumer psychology. There will be one more lecture that will follow this lecture where what I will do is I will uh, review what we have done over the 19 lectures including this one. Now in this lecture what I am going to do is I am going to complete where we left off in lecture number 18 uh, when we are looking at what is marketing communication and what is the need of marketing communication. Further on we are also looking at uh, various aspects of marketing communication. Now to brief a uh, little bit of what we have done in this uh, 18 lectures, previous lectures, uh, we started off by looking at what is consumer behavior, defining uh, types of consumers and looking at uh, and looking at how to do consumer research. Yeah, of uh, what is we actually make this is one next, and we followed a famous model of consumer decision making, which is called the Blackwell uh, uh, model of consumer decision making. So, there what we do it was we focused on uh, something called uh, information acquisition. Now, even before information acquisition we focused on need recognition which is the first step in any decision making process. So, we looked at the variables which affects need recognition of consumers, how is the need recognized and why this is necessary is because if the consumer has no need, if he does not have a drive uh, to interact into the marketplace he will probably not make any behavior as such. So, there has to be a stimulus to start a behavior and the stimulus in this case is the need recognition. So, we looked at what is need recognition and how does this need recognition is perceived. Now, once a need is recognized, we also looked at how does the consumer search for information and following that we looked at uh, once the consumer has an information about what he wants into the marketplace or from the marketplace how does he do, uh, do something called alternate evaluation. Now, uh, there are a host of things, host of products which are available in the marketplace and what the consumer has to do is to uh, focus on these products, do an alternate evaluation. So, based on his need, he decides what kind of product he is looking forward for and based on the information, he narrows down a number of products which can serve the need that has arose in him for the product or the service. And then there is a process of alternate evaluation which basically means that the consumer compares a number of products which are available which offers similar kind of benefits to him. So, we discussed that process of how the consumer does this evaluation and then we focused on something called the final choice process. So, how does the consumer choose the final product? And we looked at several models of choice, the compensatory, non-compensatory and so on and so forth. And finally, we focused on something called process of post-purchase evaluation. So, in post-purchase evaluation what we did was we looked at uh, once the consumer has a product and he uh, knows that he is satisfied with it, how does he use the product? So, the consumption process, once the product is available with the consumer, how does he consume the product? So, that is of importance. And once the consumption has happened, once the consumer has used the product or starts using the products, interacts with the product, what are the ways in which consumers interact with the products? Now, once the consumer interacts with a product, uses a product, he ought to have positive or negative feeling about it, a positive satisfaction or dissatisfaction. So, then we focused on what are the positive, how consumer deals with the satisfaction with uh, using a product, when the product matches what he wants and 
how does he deals with the dissatisfaction. So, once the product fails him in some way, how does he responds to that and then how he moves from the product which is not working to the other product which is working. And so, this is the first part that we did in the last uh, 18 lectures. Now, after these uh, the process of understanding what a consumer behavior is and what is the decision process of the consumer, we moved on to certain psychological variables which is of interest. Now, since the course is on consumer psychology, we largely focused on psychological variables which affect the consumer transactions and the behavior of the consumer, the interactions of the consumer into the marketplace. So, we started off by looking at perceptions which is a basic psychological process and how does perceptions affect consumer behavior. So, we looked at all subject related factors which is individual factors within the consumer and stimulus related factors and in addition to that we looked at certain other kind of perceptions, social perceptions, price perceptions, cultural perceptions and how these, these perceptions actually affect consumer behavior. Now, the meaning of perception is making organization, taking in information and organizing this information to a meaningful output is what perception is defined as. So, we looked at how inputs from various systems are organized into meaningful holes and what is the meaning that is derived for it and the process of organizing this information and that is perception. So, we not only looked at uh, perception as per se, but we also looked at social perceptions, cultural perceptions and so many other perception types, price perception and how does this affect the behavior of the consumer. Then we looked at uh, something called basic cognitive processes like learning memory and uh, organization or categorization of information and how these processes actually affect the behavior of the consumer. So, we dwelled on to a certain theories of memory and how these theories of memory uh, affect the way consumer behaves in the marketplace. Then we looked at certain learning theories starting with uh, instrumental classical conditioning and observational learning and so many other theories probabilistic theories of how these theories are actually used by the consumer and the marketer to make the marketplace a better place, a place for consistent interactions, a place which supports what the consumer wants. Then we looked at processes of emotion and mood and how emotion and mood and consumer involvement affects the behavior of the consumer. So, both mood and emotion and consumer involvement and motivation are factors which are psychological in nature and these factors are meant to affect the behavior of the consumer into the marketplace. So, we looked at uh, several theories of uh, consumer mood and consumer emotion and we looked at how intrinsic and extrinsic motivations and various formats of motivation actually affect the perception or the behavior of the uh, consumer into the marketplace. After that, we looked at a very important uh, topic which was attitude and attitude change. So, how is attitude formed? So, we uh, in that particular class I defined the psychological vari variable of attitude because attitude is a very important part of consumer behavior. Attitude defines how a consumer behaves. So, we discussed in detail what is attitude, the there is theories of attitude and the various forms of attitude change starting with persuasion and not limiting to uh, the idea of cognitive dissonance and indirect methods of attitude change. Now, why is it necessary? Because change of attitude, attitude itself is a feeling uh, way consumer thinks about products. And uh, the change of attitude is very necessary for making the consumer uh, choose products or uh, do alternate evaluation into the marketplace. In decision making, consumer decision making attitude change is an important factor and most marketers are actually targeting attitude change. So, we looked at those theories and we looked at uh, this attitude and attitude change in the context of consumer behavior in those classes. Now, in the last class, we looked at something called communication effects which is messages which are put on into the marketplace by the marketer and how these messages are perceived and what are the factors these messages uh, uh, are controlled by and how these messages affect 
the behavior of consumer or rather the change the attitude of the consumer into the marketplace. So, what role does various factors play? So, in the last lecture we looked at four different models of communication effects. So, briefly we will go through those models and then what we will I'll do is in this uh, start with the present lecture where we look at various factors which affect consumer behavior or uh, the consumer attitude change or consumer interaction to the marketplace. So, we started off last lecture by looking at what is communication effects. So, briefly looking at what communication effects is and so we looked at what is the basic response of these communication effects and there we looked at the desired response of most communication effects is increase awareness, brand acceptance, brand preference, brand trial and brand adoption. And then we looked at various different models of consumer effects and we started off by discussing something called the hierarchy of effects model which basically says that this model what it proposes is that for a message uh, or, or for a communication message uh, uh, market communication to be effective it has to follow the steps of an AIDA model. And what is an AIDA model? An AIDA model says that most advertisements on marketing communication has to arise interest, uh, capture attention, invoke desire and lead to action and the four steps any advertisement or a uh, message has to do. Then we looked at a more complex model of uh, 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 hierarchy of effects which is called the uh, Steiner model and in the Steiner model we looked at five stages of the Steiner model awareness, acceptance, preference, buying intention and trial and purchase. And so, this is how the model looks like and so, this model where we discussed what are these factors and how these factors if actually affect the behavior of the consumer or the interaction of the consumer into the market place. The next model of discussion was the integrated information response model. Now, this is a better model or a more comprehensive model of consumer uh, message uh, uh, viewing or message acceptance and what does this model really do? This is what the model looks like. It says how does the consumer, it explains how does the consumer perceives these messages and based on these marketing messages, how does he form commitment to the products. And so, there are two ways to this. So, as you can look at this is uh, this is called the information source from where the information actually comes about. This is where the information actually comes about and this is the marketing messages. Now, this information source has two ways of actually affecting the consumer. One way is a direct way which is using the 5 way, 5B pathway. So, a message is given to a consumer, the consumer accepts it, forms higher order beliefs and has higher order effect, gets higher order feeling. So, highly trust the message and forms a positive attitude toward the message and leads to commitment. Another way in which consumers response to, consu uh, uh, to marketing messages, advertisements or any form of uh, information which is passed on by the marketer and which is intended for the consumer is through something called this particular pathway which is the two way pathway. And so, here what happens is an advertisement is given to consumers and these consumers actually have very low belief about this and develops a lower order belief and lower order effect and then goes to trial. And once he tries the product, he had forms a higher order belief, higher order effect and then forms a commitment to the particular product. There is a third way in which the consumer forms lower order beliefs and lower order effect and then tries the product, does not get satisfied with the product and actually goes on trying the product again and again. And so, that is what we discussed in the last uh, class, these three or four different possibilities of this model, how does this really work. Then we discuss something called the extended dual mediation model, which basically what it says is that it dwells upon the fact that any advertisement leads to effect emotional response and this emotional response leads to a belief about the advertisement as well as the feeling about the advertisement and the belief about the advertisement and the also in reinforces the feeling about the advertisement and this feeling about the advertisement or the attitude about the advertisement because the feeling and the belief will, will form the attitude. This attitude about the advertisement will actually lead to the formation of cognitions about the brand. Now, most messages are about a product and a brand in detail. And so, the cognition about the brand or the belief about the brand is influenced by the attitude about the ad and the cognition about the ad. And this cognition about the uh, the brand, cognition about the company which is uh, which is manufacturing the, uh, the product or for which the advertisement is there, that will lead to attitude about the brand. And this attitude about the brand is also influenced by the attitude about the 
advertisement which finally leads to the purchase intention. So, if you remember from the last class, this is there is a way to define this and we discussed this in the last class. And the last model that we discussed in the last class was elaboration likelihood model which has two processes the effect central route and the peripheral route and central route are used for factual messages as well as peripheral routes are used for emotional messages and so we also looked at the various conditions for example motivation and ability and how motivation and ability actually influences the message perception and behavior of consumer into the marketplace. So, these are things that we just into, uh, did into the last class. Now, starting in today's class, we will look at various factors which sort of define the behavior of the consumer or the, which defines the effectiveness of uh, the, uh, the marketing communication. So, basically marketing communication can be of two or three forms. Marketing communication could be an advertisement, it could be a clerk in a, um, uh, in a retail store when he gives you some information or it could be a salesperson in, in a uh, showroom which, uh, which is giving you any information or marketing communications can also be uh, uh, advertisements into the newspapers or add columns, editorial columns or reviews into the newspaper. So, basically then marketing communication are these different formats, they use these different formats for passing on information about products to the to, uh, to, uh, desired consumers and so various factors actually affect the uh, behavior of consumers and so briefly speaking these communication effects which is what is the effect of message um, uh, or advertisement on the consumer behavior and these the AIDA model and all that we have discussed extended dual uh, mediation model, all these models or the revolution likelihood model, all these models are then influenced by various factors of the source which is creating the message, the message itself as well as the media which is creating message. So, this, this particular communication effect with the, the effectiveness of any advertisement is dependent on something called the source which is creating the ad. So, source creating the ad has a influence on how the advertisement will be perceived by the consumers and that will further lead to the uh, attitude formation of a positive or negative attitude or lead to an attitude change which will further lead to the behavior of the consumer into the marketplace. Or these other factors are media factors, so the media vehicle, how the communication message is passed on to people. So, it could be in terms of newspaper, it could be in terms of television, it could be in terms of so many other things. And so, it is uh, the source factors, the media factors and the message factors itself. So, what is the message? And so, we will look into these three factors into this particular class. So, starting with source factors, what are the various factors the source which affects the uh, effectiveness of any marketing communication. Now, two components expertise and trustworthiness are essential to source credibility. Now, when, uh, when you see a message, when you see an advertisement, any advertisement has a source. Let it be a Patanjali advertisement about a toothpaste. Now, somebody comes in and explains that this is an herbal toothpaste. Now, the source which is creating the message, the person who is uh, asking you to use Patanjali, that source itself, uh, that the expertise of the person who is uh, demonstrating or who is telling you to use the message and the trustworthiness with that particular source has a lot of effect on source credibility. Now, people take source credibility very seriously, they actually verify the source who is creating. So, if there is a, uh, there is a, a herbal toothpaste which is being promoted, a message for a herbal toothpaste, an advertisement for a herbal toothpaste. If Ramdev comes in or uh, somebody who is a herbal doctor, uh, Ayurvedic doctor, he comes in and he, uh, he explains to you how these toothpaste really work, then you trust it and because you believe that this doctor uh, who is uh, a herbal doctor is an expert. Now, the expertise of the source. Now, if some random ABC comes in and tries to advertise uh, the herbal toothpaste for you, you are not going to trust him, but you trust experts. And so, doctors, Ayurvedic doctors are experts or yogis are experts in terms of herbal medicines and so you trust them. And so, if, uh, if Ramdev comes in and says that buy this herbal medicine, you believe from all the knowledge that you have about Ramdev or his yogi uh, or his Patanjali Yogpeet that they manufacture herbal uh, 
uh, products. So, what happens is that you believe that the source is an expert and you also have trustworthiness in that increases trustworthiness and so for, for you that source is or that person is credible. So, Ramdev advertising for uh, toothpaste or uh, he is uh, uh, any other person from his yoga peat from the Patanjali yoga peat in a particular way if he advertises or a yogi advertises uh, uh, for the herbal products or a herbal doctor advertises for a herbal product you are going to uh, trust him. But if a incom in incompetent source is used then people do not trust it. For example, let us say any other take any other ad let us say an ad for um, uh, masala right. So, or an ad for uh, spices. Now, an ad for spices will uh, will be influenced by or will be more promoted by if somebody who is a chef actually advertises this masala because chefs know more about uh, spices, uh, they, they use spices in their daily life and they are more expert in that and more trustworthy than using Shah Rukh Khan into a ad for spices because he is not an expert. And so, source credibility has a lot of effect or a lot to say in terms of expertise and trustworthiness. Also source credibility affects consumer persuasion through the process of internalization. So, why does it happens? It happens because people internalize this message. If an expert give a message, if uh, tomorrow uh, somebody who is an uh, expert, a master chef, he uh, goes and brings an ad, he, he comes in an ad and makes an advertisement for spices and he says that use these spices because these spices Tata Sampoon or whatever it is, use these spices because these spices has this flavor and, and this kind of um, organic compound, this kind of smell and so on and so forth. You will trust it because you will internalize this message. You will take this message from a credible source and you will store it internally for the reference because each time you think about that person that master chef this masala will come to your uh, uh, mind and so you will buy it. And so through the process of internalization process of binding this source who is trustworthy and, and expert with the particular product which is advertising binding them and internalizing them thus uh, effectiveness of source credibility uh, plays in, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, an effective communication system. Another factor is uh, which is of an, uh, which is a source related factor which affects uh, the perception of people or which affects the behavior of people or which affects the effectiveness of marketing communications or advertisement is something called source credibility. How credible is the source and so perception of trust results from the use, uh, use of low selling or soft sell tactics. So, how credible is the source? So, the credibility is all influenced a lot by expertise and trustworthiness that we have seen. So, uh, some of the perception of trust of sources or people who are uh, demonstrating a message or, uh, or explaining a message in an ad is dependent on the use of low selling or soft sell tactic. Now, if people use soft sell tactic or sources use soft sell tactic where they do not uh, force you or do not uh, some way hint that buy their product, but just gives you a reason enough to uh, good reason enough so that you consider using their product that is called soft sell. If, if they do it that way, then people are more tend to buying that particular product. So, instead of saying buy my product or instead of saying that my product is better than other product, use a soft sell tactic. An expert can use a soft sell tactic saying that uh, this can be a good uh, option for you to buy. Uh, uh, and, and this will solve all your uh, potential problems or satisfy the need that you have recognized, satisfy the need of the product that you want. And so, that is very important. Also, perception that salesperson is competent. If people believe that the salesperson who is selling them are competent enough, uh, they have knowledge about the product. For example, if you go to a cloth store and the person who is selling you the clothes, if he has some knowledge about the cloth, various designs of the cloth, various kind of uh, uh, colors and shades and so uh, of fabrics, then you trust, trust that salesperson to be competitive, to be competitive enough and you trust what he says rather than on a salesperson who has no idea about clothes and standing in a clothes store. Also perception that service is of high quality. 
when you go to a store and and you believe that the co uh, store gives you high quality service in terms of uh, consumer satisfaction in terms of uh, interactions whether it is monetary interaction or personal interaction with the sales person or uh, good free goodies or all kinds of things which are there so if you believe that the service is of high quality that uh, of the store or any service is of high quality uh, um, uh, maybe it's a car service for example a maruti cell service and so they, if you believe that it is a high service when you give them a call they come to you and give you the good service and if you believe that this kind of a uh, service is uh, is of high quality then you trust that source then you trust that advertisement which is basically of maruti saying that our service is of high quality or high grade service and perception that car manufacturer cares about customers so in terms of uh, since we are using car in the last example or in the last point and this point also and so perception that car manufacturer cares about the car uh, is uh, and about the consumers that leads to more source credit. so in terms of car industry if you look at the car industry if uh, a company sells you a car right and so after buying the car it also goes ahead and calls you several times right tries to make this personal interaction with you offers you good goodies free services some kind of interactions or takes feedback now, if he does all these things he will start thinking positively about uh, the company because the consumer uh, the the action that the company is doing the action that the particular showroom is doing or the the service center is doing is that it is trying to make long term reports with you or uh, long term interactions with you and that shows that it cares for its consumers and so in those cases those sources which which achieve any or most of these factors are known to be more credible sources another interesting factor is source attractiveness how attractive a particular source is now source attractiveness generally refers to the models which are working in a in a source and it, it is believed that not at all times attractiveness of a source really works for uh, a particular product so sources consi considered attractive by target audiences are more persuasive than those that, that are unattractive so those sources which are unattractive those sources which are not looking good so models female models or male models you need an advertisement if they are very attractive if they are appealing to uh, the person uh, who is watching the message or very appealing to the audience uh, or the market segment for which the ad is made then uh, people take it very seriously and uh, these people very seriously and uh, start uh, liking them liking the ad and take whatever uh, information is passed on from them to to the uh, people who is looking at the ad and take these messages very seriously now why does this happen there are two types of uh, factors here one is identification with the actual self now the thing is if people find that the source the model which is giving you information about the product if the model is matching with your actual self people take them more seriously right so the more identification the particular model in an advertisement of a product shows to your actual self the more highly this model is accepted so identification with actual self is when consumers identify with a source seeing similarities between that source and the way they perceive themselves so if uh, if there is a garage advertisement and the advertisement is carried by a mechanic or the advertisement in in the advertisement you see a mechanic explaining why you should use this particular garage or if it let's say it is a advertisement of castrol now if it is an advertisement of castrol which is an oil uh, or engine oil a 42t engine oil and this advertisement highlights or it focuses it uh, uses a garage mechanic to explain the benefits of using this oil and this mechanic is in the usual form he is not all dressed up he is in his uh, work clothes and with all blacks and everything grease and all covered and he explains to you why you should use this engine oil and this ad is designed for those people who works in uh, these these company this uh, this uh, uh, service centers now if a person who seeing who is a mechanic sees this mechanic or a or a sells uh, uh, this uh, 
a service station uh, manager sees the mechanic uh, advertising for Castrol 40 oil and then he the, since he, he he will be using Castrol 40 in his in his garage also if he sees that and he finds himself to be closer to the mechanic the cl mechanic closer to him he will trust the mechanic based ad more than if some celebrity comes in and uh, and, and tries and explain to you why you should be using castrol 40 oil or castrol 2t oil in engines right so the more you see the more the mechanic for which the mechanics for which the ad of castrol 40 is uh, uh, finds themselves closer to the person who's uh, who, who's demonstrating the ad or who is in acting in the ad the better they will find that there is a match between their actual self and the person who's advertising and the more close it is the better they will perceive the message and they will trust it and buy it the chances are purchase intention intention will be very high also identification with ideal self is when consumers identify with sources seeing similarities between sources that they would like themselves to be so and sometimes what happens is that people like to be something else they have something different something ideal right and so people for example let's say those ads in which people want to be uh, lose their weight now if you uh, show and gym ad with people with uh, famous stars who, who have very well toned shaped body and they advertise a gym then people form attachment with these uh, people these these actors with very good bodies and body images or self images or very uh, nicely curved bodies the reason is that people who want to use gym and want to have these bodies they see themselves closer to those actors or those uh, performers into the advertisement which have well maintained body and so they seem these and they see themselves very close to the bodies that these people have and so they are more likely to attach to their uh, these these uh, actors and because they self they see their self they see their ideal self very closer to the advert uh, advertiser or the person who's in the acting and so they trust the uh, the the source more and so source attractiveness are affected by both actual self and ideal self now another important thing uh, which is which is of uh, uh, importance here is source power so another variable is source power now consumers perceive communication as having different type of source powers whenever a message is given now the most consumers think that or know that the source has some kind of a power or some kind of a uh, way to control the message and the people looking at the message the more the the consumer believes that the source has power some kind of power to change the way people see or to control the way people perceive these ads or act upon the the message of the act the more they are likely to fall in line with whatever the message is saying for example those ads which are given by police officials or hospital officials doctors lawyers or uh, uh, those ads which comes from the income tax department now those ads are uh, taken very differently or taken in more um, a matter of factly by people because they believe that the income tax, tax department has a lot of power a lot of source power and they can control the behavior of the people they can control the actions of the people or police department ads which actually ask you to uh, uh, use driving uh, uh, preferences or use uh, driving licenses or certain ways of driving driving rules and so on and so forth because they believe that police department has a way to know how you act and so source power is another important thing now there are three types of source powers that people are afraid of perceived control perceived control is that the consumer's perception that the source is able to administer rewards and or punishment if the consumer does not comply with the message demand so if the um, uh, person for whom the ad is made if the consumers for whom the ad is made believe that the source has some kind of a control for example police departments or it departments now when they make an ad the consumer believes that there are these these companies or these ads and these people who have made the ads have a lot of control right and since they have a lot of control they have a lot of perceived control they can monitor the action and they can change the action of how the consumer is interacting with an ad so an ad comes in from income tax department saying that please pay the taxes by 30th of june 
Now, these are taken very seriously and consumers act immediately because they believe that if they do not act by 30th June, the income tax department will come knock on their houses and then take their money away or form give them some kind of punishment. And so, this is the perceived control because they believe that everybody is being watched and that is why these ads come in this way saying that you are being watched. Another interesting factor that is of concern here is that perce perceived concern. In perceived concern, what uh, the thing is that perceived concern is that consumer's perception, that the source cares about whether or not the consumer complies. If the if the uh, person knows that the perceived concern, if the source uh, doesn't care whether the person actually replies or not, or whether uh, uh, whether the consumer actually acts in line with whatever the advertisement is saying the more he is uh, attracted towards or more he is embedded towards uh, intended towards doing that action. So, uh, in terms of doctors asking uh, consumers to use a particular toothpaste and compare this with the uh, the case of an IT department ad. Now, in terms of doctors advertising used to use, use a particular uh, kind of a toothpaste for uh, some kind of a, a teeth problem. Now, here the consumer believes that there is no concern as such and the uh, doctor actually does not care whether you are using the toothpaste or not. On the other hand, the IT department ad which tells you to uh, pay the money by 30th June, here the perceived concern is very high because the source cares whether you uh, pay the money or not. In those cases, the IT department adds the uh, consumer is more uh, or highly uh, has a high chance of interacting with that ad or act, acting whatever the in lines with whatever the ad is requesting you to, then those ads were which are which are given by uh, doctors saying you to use a particular kind of a toothpaste for a particular kind of a dental problem. And then perceived scrutiny, perceived scrutiny is the consumer's perception that sources is able to know whether the consumer has complied or not. The more scrutiny uh, uh, a particular source has, the more power of scrutiny a particular source has, the higher the consumer is. Uh, in, in uh, the higher the chance that the consumer will act according to what the source is asking you. So, again looking at the IT ad, the IT department has a high chance or is a high perceived scrutiny because it knows which consumers have filed and which consumers have not filed the taxes and they can come after you. And so, they have high perceived scrutiny and the consumers are more has uh, are more likely to respond to their ads, more likely to add uh, uh, act according to what the ad is saying. Then those ads by doctors or certain other uh, lawyers or some, some kind of a uh, source which has some kind of a power. For example, doctors have the power of healing you and so those ads which uh, comes from doctors saying that use this kind of a toothpaste because they do not have that kind of a network, they do not have that kind of uh, the, that kind of a um, facility to monitor each and, each and every consumer if they are using the product or not. But the IT department ads or police department ads which actually have the ability and the resources to monitor what you are doing after the ad has been displayed those people should, uh, know that they have high perceived scrutiny and they are more likely to add towards the act. Now, similar to source power another important source factor is something called source congruity and what is source congruity? Source congruity refers to the extent to which a celebrity who endorses a brand has a characteristic that matches the brand. Now, the more close a celebrity who is advertising a brand is towards the particular brand itself, the higher the chances that people will actually be reinforced. For example, let us say Clint Eastwood. Now, Clint Eastwood or John Claude Van Damme is making an advertisement for a rugged pair of jeans. Now, the John Claude Van Damme that or or Clint Eastwood has a rugged personality and jeans are known to be rugged and so they are more close together and so John Claude Van Damme advertising a jeans at, is taken more seriously or Tom Cruise advertising uh, adventure sports is taken more seriously than uh, Leonardo DiCaprio uh, coming in and making an ad for a rugged jeans because it is taken as more of a uh, romantic hero or a sweet kind of a hero who is not that rugged. Right. And so, that is what is source congruity. The more congruent, the more close a source is to what is advertising, the more positively he is taken or more positively people uh, act to his message. Source congruity plays a major role in advertising persuasion when consumers are likely to elaborate on the advertised products. The more the consumers uh, believe that the person is close to the product being advertised, the more 
highly they uh, they they react to the message and the more higher the chances of the attitude positive attitude being formed towards the brand and the more higher the chances that a behavioral intention towards product uh, purchase is formed and the higher the, in, uh, the higher the product purchase so that is what is source credibility the gender of a source person and or the announcer in a television commercial has impact on consumer perceptions or the effectiveness of the present also who is advertising the gender of the person who is advertising has a lot of role to play in terms of source con congruity now female products if they are advertised by a male model then they are not taken very seriously but male products if they are advertised by a female product they are taken seriously so male products when they are advertised by both males and females they are taken seriously but female products are never uh, taken very seriously by females when a male comes in and advertises this message also the spokesperson who is the spokesperson of a television commercial that has a lot to do with who is the spokesperson a uh, females are uh, known to be or uh, believed to be le uh, a lot less credible than males in terms of source credibility also in terms of trustworthiness also and so these are some of the factors gender related factors which actually uh, show you what source factors affect marketing communications or the effectiveness of marketing communications the second factor which we are of in, uh, which we will be dealing here is message factors so, so there are certain message factors that we'll uh, deal so as i said we'll deal with message factors source factors and media factors so second is message factors for example message tone what is the tone of the message what is message tone message tone refers to the emotional versus factual appeal of a message what is the appeal of the message what is the content of the message how is it appealing to consumers now factual versus emotional appeals factual appeals are those appeals which actually have a lot of information about the product which are factual information of the product so those ads which are of uh, uh, of the nature which uh, uh, which makes the consumer elaborate or dwell into information passed on by the message those are those are factual message uh, appeals now so uh, ads about uh, let's say medicine ads about uh, tax paying companies tax processing paying services ads about banking ads about things uh, like uh, let's say a new credit card now all these uh, messages all these advertisements have a factual appeal because the consumer have to process this cognitively process this message and this message have high risks and high benefits also and so they have factual appeal because those messages has to give positive information or a lot of information factual information matter of fact information in to the uh, consumers now if these facts are uh, varied if these facts are not true the consumer will not take in the message positively and not act accordingly but emotional appeal messages are those messages which appeal to the con uh, consumer on an emotional level right so those ads which have attractive uh, models coming in or use humor or some other form of uh, emotional appeal to make the consumer understand the ad and not process it at a cognitive level are using emotional appeals so uh, in information containing ads are factual messages and information ads or uh, those ads which uh, uh, sort of <clears throat> bring out a positive or negative emotion onto you are emotional appeals so a lot of factors are there for example message processing the message processing is another factor which affects the way an information or an ad affects the consumer and so distraction is one factor the more distracted a consumer is made the more distractions are caused uh, a consumer is made so factual messages actually negatively um, uh, relate to distractions more distractions are there then factual messages don't work but high distraction levels actually are more good more pertinent for emotional appeals message pace the pace with with a message is produced now uh, if a message is produced at a very high pace if a message is given to you at a very high pace if it is coming to you very uh, in a in a very uh, rapid form then they are not perceived well by consumers also factual messages should never be using a high message pace emotional messages can actually work with high pace product familiarity the more familiar a product is the better factual messages are and so these factors 
actually really work for factual messages and uh, these are emotional and so it works for most most of it so the more uh, familiar with uh, with a product that you are the more higher factual messages work but if uh, you are fami unfamiliar with a product if you are not very familiar with a product then emotional appeals tend to work more also priming priming is another factor which actually affects factual versus emotional appeals or demonstrate both of it the higher the priming priming actually works for experts and not for novices and so factual messages which are meant for experts in those cases priming does not work. Now, in an advertisement, so there was, a, there was an advertisement for car company. Now, they use something called priming. What they did was they presented different kind of cars and different kind of primes. So, each car was presented by a different prime. The prime was actually wallpaper. So, in one case the wallpaper was in, in terms of red color uh, flames which are uh, there in the background of the car. And in that, and this was demonstrating safety features. On the other hand, the uh, wallpaper was more of a cloudy uh, kind of a thing, which was uh, a blue color wallpaper, which was more cloudy in nature, and that was in the background of the car, which was in, which was influencing uh, comfort of the car. Now, when these messages were shown to both experts and uh, novices, experts didn't look at the background, and so the priming which the, the background which was uh, somehow priming that this is what the car is influenced. So, uh, uh, a flame at the background of a car was actually telling that the car is more uh, loaded with safety features and a uh, cloud uh, with uh, a white blue kind of a cloud which demonstrated comfort which at the background of the car was actually uh, supporting comfort. And so, these background messages, these background wallpapers were noticed by novices and they get, got influences experts which used factual appeals or factual messages they did not get influenced by that kind of a thing. And so, this priming also tends to work for more for emotional messages than factual messages, but low levels of priming actually work for factual messages also. Now, the different kind of emotional appeals also that we, that can be used. Now, the different emotional appeals are for example, fear appeals. Now, a lot of messages use fear appeals. Right. So, remember the uh, income tax ad, they use fear appeal, their messages say that do this, if you do not do this then what by 30th June, 30th July or some certain date what will happen is the income tax uh, department is watching. And so, fear is another interesting thing that is tribute or very simple uh, uh, matter of fact advertisement where a uh, doctor comes in and says that if you are not using this kind of a toothpaste, your teeth is going to rot out. So, Colgate ads or uh, some other Sensodyne ads which tells you that they use some kind of a fear. Now, it has been found through research that moderate levels of fear are only going to work. Very low levels of fear do not work and very high levels of fear do not work. If you put very high level of fever, uh, fear into the uh, message, consumers actually pass this message, bypass this message or they suppress this message. If a low level of fear is used, consumers do not recognize the fear. So, moderate level of fear actually work and moderate level of fear actually work for emotional appeals. Humor appeals. Now, sometimes our more some messages actually use humor appeals. Now, remember the Vodafone Zuzu ad, what they do is they use humor as a message, um, as a method for uh, um, putting forward the message that is there. Now, these Vodafone ads with Zuzu's or any other ad which uses humor appeals, what they tend to do is they best work uh, when the consumer is a little bit distracted and they are not very serious and, and they work when the, uh, con uh, the context in which the message is being perceived is more uh, is, is not more organized is more disorganized. So, humor appeals and humor appeals are uh, also uh, work for only intelligent people. So, people who can comprehend if people cannot comprehend humor as appeal they will just get stuck with the humor and not know about that. So, those people who watch Zuzu ads only for looking at Zuzu, for those people the humor appeal is not working. So, the humor appeal is good for those people who have certain level of knowledge, certain level of intellect. For most people who do not have these levels of uh, intellect, the humor appeal is not working. Sex appeals. Now, it is known that nudity uh, does not work in an advertisement, but moderate level of, say, uh, uh, of sensualness does really work. Also, female sensualness works more than male sensualness and that is another thing. So, sex appeals do work, but it works for only those products which is sex related products, but uh, for other products it is light sensuousness that actually works. With high level of nudity, people forget about the uh, uh, brand or the ad or the product which is in nudities just concentrated on, concentrated on the models and so the message does not work. 
ego forces and other uh, other focused emotional appeals so there are two more kind of emotional appeals ego focused appeals are those appeals which are uh, which folk uh, which actually uh, embed in you or which uh, actually uh, elight in you uh, or lead to uh, forming personal emotions like happiness sadness so an appeal and an advertisement which actually embeds or which actually ignites happiness sadness uh, fear or anger that kind of emotion into you are ego focused ads and so they they worked in a different way than other focused emotional appeals for example those messages which uh, which uh, bring forth emotions like uh, empathy emotions like uh, others concern emotional like general well being peace these kind of uh, ads which bring out these kind of uh, emotions or these kind of emotions in people are uh, actually other focus appeals and so both kind of appeals uses diff different kind of messages or are meant for different kind of different situations and different kind of products message con context is another factor which affects the effectiveness of marketing communication message context includes any cues embedded in the message by the marketer for example background music setting or location and use of artifacts and furnishing music is another factor which is used by uh, marketers for promoting their ad now it has been known that if the music is only effective when people are not actually look, uh, 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 thinking of making a decision of buying the product it works only when people are looking for uh, uh, looking for making a positive attitude towards the product if people are thinking of buying a product or people are embedded in or people are um, engulfed in making a decision about buying a product their music doesn't work music only works to form a positive attitude towards the product and so music is been used um, as a very general fact or a very general uh, context for message effectiveness also setting a location where the particular message is being uh, is being made for example if uh, a cold drink ad is made and that is made of a context is a desert context it is more effective than a cold drink ad which is uh, inside a cold freezer or near a co uh, near the north pole so that is the message context and the use of artifacts of furnishing what kind of artifacts are used what kind of furnishings are used what kind of uh, uh, background is used in a message also has a role to play in the effectiveness of marketing communication so music works through classical conditioning by encouraging consumers to associate positive feelings around by the music with the advertised product but the only thing is that if consumers are deciding at the time when the music is being played then it doesn't work so how does it work it works by classical conditioning you feel good about the music and this feeling feeling good passed on or gets passed on to the advertisement or uh, the product advertisement which is being made message execution another interesting thing or another interesting fact psychological fact which works in terms of uh, uh, message factors or uh, and how this relate to the effective marketing communication is message execution message execution is the combination of strategies through which the message is implanted so how is the message actually implemented how is the message actually related or uh, or 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 uh, unfolds that is what is uh, message execution the use of implicit and explicit conclusions now uh, at times messages use implicit conclusions at time messages use explicit conclusion now if a message says that uh, at the end of an advertisement if the advertisement says that buy my product it is using explicit conclusions but if a product leaves the decision on the consumers or buying it or not uh, or uh, the message is made in such a way that all the bad and good points of uh, the particular product is advertised um, good points of, of course very highly and bad points to a le lesser degree and the message of or the decision of buying the product or interacting with the product is left with the consumer in those cases the consumer are more likely to like the message than if it is explicit conclusions subtle persuasion and consumer involvement if subtle persuasion is used then implicit messages are very effective than explicit conclusions and consumer involvement the more involved the consumer is the highly implicit message uh, execution will work than uh, explicit conclusions the more ex uh, involved the consumer is in those cases explicit con conclusion turns out to be counterintuitive the reason is that if a consumer is more involved and you ask them to buy a product they will have counter arguments about why i should buy the product but if a subtle implicit way is used with more involved consumers then they are more likely 
to uh, buy the product and actually understand the ad and get the information from the ad and think about buying the product or form an attitude about it and lead to purchase intention which leads to final buying. Self reference messages speak directly to the consumer. So, those messages in which messages are made in such a way that uh, it refers to the consumer in some way, it refers to uh, the consumer's personality in some way, those messages are uh, taken or they speak directly to the consumer and they uh, have high chances of being recognized by the consumer, understood by the consumer and have, are being more effective than <coughs> non self pressed message. Also use a factual versus evaluative information. If factual information is given, then people are more likely to look at that ad positively than evaluative information because for an evaluative information where people have to, evo uh, to evaluate the uh, message or to somehow uh, rate on the message or understand the message or, or do something about it and then evaluate the message, those kinds of ads uh, taken in rather negatively than factual messages which where the facts about the product which is being advertised are present onto the message. So, that is message execution related factors. Comparative messages. Now, comparative messages are those messages where two products are compared side by side. So, uh, remember all those uh, ads of surf which says that surf works better than something else or Lysol ads which says that Lysol in comparison with phenyl, Lysol kills 99 percent jump, phenyl does not that kind of a thing or Mary shirt, Thiri shirt say Safed kaise. So, all those kind of ads are comparative ads. Now, comparative ad message is one in which a product is compared directly with the competing product in terms of more product features. As I said, two ads two products are taken in side by side and they are compared. One product is compared directly to the all the product benefits with the other uh, product. Now, when does this work? Now, generally speaking, this comparative messages do not generally work and it falls on the face most of the time. But uh, there are times when these comparative messages actually work. The message use factual rather than evaluative information. If messages use factual information gives you the fact why my product is better than others, then people take this comparative messaging or comparative messages as more effectively and are more prone to reading it. Then if they are using evaluative messages. Also, promoting a new rather than established brand. If a new brand is promoted, in those cases people look for comparative or people perceive comparative messaging positively than when an established brand is compared. Third, the message is communicated through credible rather than non-credible sources. A credible source actually if uh, does this comparative messaging. If a doctor says use my brand of toothpaste and not the other brand, then people take it more uh, positively than if some hero heroine comes in and says this uh, different messages. Also comparative messages really work when the, uh, uh, the message, the product owner who makes the advertisement if he is not the market leader. Right. So, in those cases, if a market leader does this, then it is going to fall flat on his face. If a non market leader makes a comparative ad and compares his uh, ad or compares his product with a market leader and says that I am second in number or gives, gives enough reason to people saying that if A is not available, the market leader is not available, my product gives you enough uh, kind of or gives you enough uh, reasons why you should stick to it, then people actually perceive it positively. Also, message evidence of, uh, is information that uh, substantial claims. So, message evidence is also another important factor which substantiates the claims and which is shows the effectiveness of comparative messages. Mystery advertising is another thing that is used or that is of importance. Now, mystery advertising can be effective in enhancing brand awareness by, produ by producing a strong association in memory between a brand and a product. So, those kind of ads where a mystery is created behind the ad and ad is made in such a way so that a mystery is created some, some part of that is given some the other part of the ad is created or a mystery behind the use of the message or the advertisement is created in those messages uh, a strong brand awareness is produced by a strong association in the uh, memory between brand and product. The mystery creates the novelty, mysteries and novelties and these are ways of actually improving memory. So, more the mystery is created behind an ad, the higher the chances of people associating this product with the mystery and higher the chance of retaining them and con considering the product in their, in, in, in their retrieval set. 
of memory. The message narratives, message narratives are also used a number of times for our communications are more persuasive than others. Now, if your narrative is there, if a story behind an ad is there and the story somehow is made in such a way that it has certain kind of an appeal to people, then those kind of messages are remembered more because stories are made a uh, gist, most stories actually lead to the formation of gist and this gist actually gets related to the product information or about the product. And so, this kind of an uh, if you give a long story, then this people will go into this story or they will see this story and they get attracted to the story and that leads leads to uh, this message narrative leads to the acceptance of the message and the, uh, the information which is passed on from the message. Now, we tend to organize information in memory better in narrative than other forms of use and this information is more effective to make judgments than decision. This is what I have been saying that uh, the reason is this gist formation which is uh, the reason behind why narratives are better. Media factors, now, the third and uh, factor that influences ad or uh, that influences the effectiveness of ad is different kind of media factors. Now, effective selection depends upon understanding the target consumers and their media habits. Now, what kind of media should be used for uh, projecting the ad is also important. For example, should be used television, radio, magazines, newspaper, billboards, transit advertising, direct mail, telemarketing, in-store advertisement. For example, if the ad is of uh, let us say uh, some kind of spices or some kind of uh, um, uh, kitchen products. Now, those kind of products should be advertised more on television and radio because housewives, the people who actually are uh, looking forward for spices or how kitchen products are more uh, related to televisions and radios and magazines than newspapers, billboards, uh, billboards and transit advertisement or direct mail telemarketing and in-store advertisement, right. So, in-store advertisement is another thing. So, depending on what kind of product is it is, the positioning of the product and what kind of people are we looking forward for, the, what kind of people people uh, are we dedicating the ad to will decide which of these which has been used. For example, there, is, there was a study where it was found out that television uh, as a media should be used for those people who are more staying in home, who are uh, for the older age and who have a lesser level of intellect. If you have lesser level of intellect, television advertisements are better. Now, uh, in comparison to that, newspaper ads are good for those people or who have higher level of intellect and matter of factly ads should always be put on television or on, on newspapers than on televisions and so on and so forth. So, depending on the type of consumer that I am looking on to, depending on time of the ad that I am looking on to and the product that I am looking on to, one of these media categories are actually used and internet is another one which is of interest here. Now, there is a media subcategory also. Within the media also there is a subcategory. For example, if I am making a television ad, should the ad be made for a romantic versus non-romantic? So, should the ad come in before a movie or a national news or sports or so on and so forth. So, each media category is made up of several subcategories. There are many syndicate sources of research information on general media audiences and in some cases audiences for specific media vehicles or subcategories. For example, different kind of people, for example, people who are more attracted to more movies, a different kind of ad should be made than people who are uh, uh, attracted to more towards sports. And so, depending on what media subcategory is being used, a different kind of ad should be made, a different kind of media should be used. Media vehicle. So, media vehicle may be selected based on the reach and the maximum exposure that is provided for the target audience. Where do you want to reach? Whom do you want to reach? Who is your market? Who is your uh, target audience? What is the segmentation? And those factors define the reach and what is the kind of exposure that you are looking for. So, the maximum exposure uh, uh, to the target audience depends on the reach of the media vehicle. Also, vehicles may also be selected based on editorial content. What is the editorial content? So, if the editorial content is uh, of, 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 of emotional appeal, if the editorial content is not the matter of factly kind of a thing, not very explicit, not very intelligent, then a different kind of vehicle is used than if it is of highly intellectual content. So, those editorial content, those, uh, those messages which are highly intellectual in nature, for that newspapers, magazines are used. But if it is a non so um, important fact or uh, the message contains uh, editorial content which is not that uh, intellectual, then a radio or a television can be used or internet can also be used. Now, the marketer wants to control the content in which the message is received because the context also has a lot of role to play and so the marketer is interested in um, controlling the context in which the message was 
uh, is received by people. Frequency is another factor. So, the frequency of an advertisement is the number of times consumer are potentially exposed to it. So, how many times the ads are made? Advertisements, advertisers must realize that what is purchased is put. Uh, is purchase is potential exposed. So, uh, the potential exposure is dependent on how many times the ad is being placed. Now, still getting exposure is the key because the progress is made without it. So, if the number, if the frequency is very high, then people will start avoiding an ad. So, what is the actual frequency that should be there of, uh, of, of a particular ad? Now, frequency in terms of number of repetitions, in terms of television ads, uh, but in terms of editorial content, how long the ad should be, how big the ad should be. These are two things. So, if we, if we have a newspaper ad, the frequency will directly relate to the length of the ad. But if we have a television ad, the time of the ad. So, generally speaking for television ad, it is 30 second and half a paragraph of ad is very good for newspaper. That is the guideline which has been set by most marketers. Message duration and size. What is the relationship between message size and the print advertisement and the duration of television or radio commercials and their impact on consumer? There is a lot of relationship. The higher the message size is the, uh, in a print advertisement, the more distracted people become and they do not perceive the message uh, rightly. They do not look at the message rightly. Similarly, if an ad is more than 30 seconds in a, in a television, then people do not take it very positively. Of course, when the first time an ad comes in, a 1 or 2 minute ad is there, but then generally you see that this 2 minute ad is cut down across repetitions and made to 30 second ads. Consumer research findings have been contradictory because it depends upon message to message and ad to ad and people to people. So, uh, this is, uh, these are some of the factors that we uh, deal with in, in terms of, uh, these are some of the factors that we deal with in terms of uh, message communication. So, a lot of factors that we dealt today, we started off by looking at source uh, related factors where we dealt with source power, source credibility, uh, uh, then uh, thing, things like uh, source congruity and uh, these factors and source attractiveness. So, a lot of factors source attractiveness, source credibility, source uh, power and source um, uh, congruity, all these factors actually define the source who is who is behind the ad, who is creating the message and so how these factors actually affect the communication, marketing communication or makes a effective marketing communication. Similarly, we looked at message factors. Uh, uh, different message factors, for example, message tone, uh, the kind of appeal that we are using, the content of the message, and the execution of how the message is put forward in uh, are executed in the and in the natural sense, and uh, use of comparative messages and so on and so forth. How these different factors actually define how a message should be or what a message should be, and the effectiveness of the marketing communication. Similarly, we looked at media factors, different kind of media factors, sub factors, and media vehicle and frequency as uh, different variables and media message size and duration. So, the length of the message, the type the message is produced, the kind of message which is there, whether it is factual versus non-factual, what is the media which is carrying it and what are the context in which it is being presented and so these are the factors which affect the communications communication or the type of advertisements, type of message communication into the market place. Now, what we did in today's class is that we continued on from the last lecture where we looked at what is message communication and we defined message communication uh, through different models. Now, in this particular lecture, we looked at different factors source factors and message factors and media factors and how these factors actually change or actually increases the effectiveness of messages or decreases the effectiveness of the messages. So, how uh, in addition to uh, how the message is created in addition to uh, how the message is perceived by the consumer, how the behavior of the consumer is uh, changed by the factors by several message factors as well as um, content factors of the message as well as media factors as well as source factors, how they affect the behavior of the consumer or affect the uh, transaction of the consumer into the marketplace. Now, because what is uh, uh, the bottom line of it? The bottom line of it is that a well informed consumer is actually more prone to taking or forming positive attitudes or change in attitudes uh, about particular product or produ uh, products or or brands and that leads to his final commitment towards the brand which with a better commitment the higher the, the chances the higher chance of purchase intention is developed which leads to final 
purchase. So the more informed a consumer is, the better informed a consumer is, the better an ad is, the more informative an ad is, the more effective an ad is, the more um, uh, learned the consumer will be, the more information the consumer will have and the better the chances of him, him making a perfect decision or making a good decision or making a positive attitude towards a product or product group. So, uh, this is uh, the last lecture in this series of uh, lectures in uh, the course on consumer psychology and what we did was over these uh, whole eight, uh, 19 lectures, we looked at different factors. Now, in the next lecture that we will do is a review lecture where what I will do is I will look at all the lectures that we have done and we will summarize, I will try to summarize all these lectures in one particular lecture and go over the course content and link the course in some way. So, for now from here it is thank you.